Good morning, excellencies and distinguished guests. Thank you for the honor of addressing the Six Ricina Dialogue. In the novel 2034, a novel of the next world war by Elliot Ackerman and Admiral James Stavridis, armed conflict breaks out between the United States and China in the South China Sea, near the Philippines aptly named Mischief Reef. The conflict eventually, and if I may say inevitably, pulls in Russia, Iran, and India. The novel is a fictional vision of the future, but its premise is truth. The future will be determined by the dynamics of the Indo-Pacific. As External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar wisely says, the Indo-Pacific is unquestionably the arena for the contemporary version of the great game, where multiple players with diverse ambitions display their strategic skills. In that arena, multilateralism is imperative. For the Philippines, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and ASEAN centrality are the core of that multilateral order. We seek to reduce even more its former marginality, while staying skeptical of great power schemes that seek to drag in ASEAN piecemeal into larger quarrels, more dangerous rivalries, and far bigger ambitions that we as a region of peace do not share. ASEAN is currently facing the challenge of moral irrelevancy. If it fails to resolve the crisis and carnage in Burma, where silence gives consent and engagement with the junta amounts to complicity. We do not want ASEAN centrality to return to marginality as a symbol of what a multinational organization should not be. The ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific advances ASEAN-led mechanisms such as the East Asia Summit as platforms for dialogue and implementation but it is also open to developing cooperation with other regional and sub-regional mechanisms in the Asia-Pacific and Indian Ocean regions as may be needed. We therefore welcome India's Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, for it complements the ASEAN outlook, with both emphasizing the need for a safe and rules-based maritime domain. We also recognize the value of other multilateral initiatives, or what some have referred to as minilateral arrangements, involving as they do only three or four like-minded countries. Notable among this is the quadrilateral security dialogue, which is moving towards a more institutionalized arrangement and has expanded areas of cooperation. What is critical for us is the Quad's reaffirmation of their support for ASEAN centrality and the clear understanding that neither ASEAN as a whole nor any ASEAN member state may be deemed included in Quad initiatives unless they have participated as a whole or individually and concurred in its decisions, or it is expanded to a pentagon or a hexagon until it is shy of completing the circle of international felicity. But then there is already the United Nations if only they were so. The dynamics and wide geographic reach of the Indo-Pacific require multilateral groupings that are flexible and adaptable, both in membership and strategic aims. The Philippines will continue to emphasize the principles of inclusiveness, openness, cooperation, and consensus building, and respect for international law in our approach to regional cooperation and to external relations through the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. In closing, allow me to go back to the novel 2034. India, with its pragmatism and long view of history, saves the world from plunging deeper into a nuclear war, with Admiral Patel admonishing the main character that the world is large enough for coexistence of global powers. With enlightened multilateralism and recognition of a commonality of interests, and with a long view in mind, the Philippines is hopeful that the future of 2034 stays fiction. Though multilateralism is eventually dependent on the extent of consensus 
among major powers. It cannot flourish without the contributions of all powers, big and small. Thank you.